Learning jazz guitar is overwhelming and chaotic when you're starting out. There are thousands of things to learn, and the most difficult part is not practicing and playing. It's figuring out what to work on. I've taught jazz for almost 20 years, and there are three basic things that you need to focus on in the beginning to make sure that you stay motivated and don't overcomplicate things from the start. I'll begin with some stuff for soloing, then some chords, and finally the third skill that most students and teachers should pay more attention to because it's both important and practical, plus that you hear it in almost any jazz solo. Jazz has the reputation of being a style of music that requires hundreds of scales. Now, in reality, that's of course not true, and teachers who make you start there are not going to help you learn how to play. I'm pretty sure you know which scale to start with, but it may still disappoint some that the pentatonic scale isn't enough. The sound that you think of when you think of a jazz lick is not what you get from the pentatonic scale. That sounds like this. Compared to a bebop inspired line, there are just some things that are not there in the pentatonic scale. So how do you start working towards that sound? You want to start with the major scale. In the end, you can play jazz music just using three scales. But the major scale is by far the most important one. And there are many songs that you can work on just knowing that. But you need to make sure to learn the right exercises connected to the major scale. Since I mentioned that you only need three scales, let me explain that. I'm of course talking about major, harmonic, and melodic minor. I have another video about that, but if you're not yet playing jazz songs, then that's not what you should focus on. It's a lot of theory. This video will be much more practical and useful right now. Now you're probably wondering how to practice the major scale, and I'm gonna give you a simple way to build this up with a stepwise set of exercises. But of course, you still need to do the work yourself to get it into your fingers, and into your ears. The basic chord type in jazz is a seventh chord, and you want to connect the major scale to the seventh chords, and you do that by learning the seventh chord arpeggios in the scale, what is also called the diatonic seventh chords. This is also why I often refer to that exercise as the most important scale exercise in jazz. The main reason for not playing arpeggios as separate positions is that you don't really need them like that when you're soloing. Most jazz licks only use one octave arpeggios, and you don't play the arpeggios by themselves. They're usually placed in a jazz lick with other notes from the scale. So you might as well practice them like that as well. Luckily, you can ease into it with a simple set of stepwise exercises. The first one is really easy. Play the scale. Instead of going directly to the seventh chord arpeggios, then you can start with the interval that the arpeggios are constructed from, the diatonic thirds. And similar to the next exercise, the diatonic thirds are useful for you to become more flexible with the scale, and you also need these intervals in your solos anyway. If you stack two diatonic third intervals, you get a triad, another structure that you want in your ears and in your fingers, since it's incredibly useful for soloing. Now, it kind of also makes sense to add the name of the triads in the exercise, which I did. Check it out. <laughs> Like this, you're gradually building your technique with these stepwise exercises. You're getting this into your ears to make it easier to play the next exercise, which you get when you add another third interval to the triads, the diatonic seventh chords. This exercise helps you with several important things. You have arpeggios for all the chords in the song so that you can play solos that really nail the changes. But what is just as powerful is that you can also learn to use several different arpeggios over each chord, and in that way have many options for great lines over every chord. Check out how much you can do with this in this short example. Once you can play the diatonic arpeggios as an exercise, then go through a song and play the arpeggio of each chord, just to really get an overview of the harmony. You also want to develop vocabulary by both making licks with arpeggios and, of course, checking out how other people are using these arpeggios, something I'll return to later as well. But of course, it's not all soloing, and if you're soloing over chords, you also want to be able to play those chords so that you know what they sound like. Let's look at that. Jazz beginners waste a lot of time learning different voicings and lots of inversions without being able to play songs or 
do anything with all that material. And sadly, this is a very common problem. Instead of starting with complicated chords with lots of extensions, then it's a thousand times better to start with a much simpler foundation that you can later add color to and that you can use to play the songs and hear the harmony. The chords that you want to start with are the shell voicings. Easy, complete and flexible three note voicings for seventh chords. Now, usually a seventh chord has four notes. You saw this with the arpeggios. But in this case, the shell voicings leave out the fifth of the chord. And shell voicings have two variations. One with the root on the sixth string, so this C, then of course the seventh and the third on the middle string set. And then the other variation, which is the root on the fifth string, and then you have the third, and then the seventh on the middle string set. Chord tones are always on the middle string set, and the roots are always on the lower string set, which is very useful, as you will see in a few seconds. For the shell voicings, you also want to learn them in the scale, so the diatonic chords of a scale, because in that way you're focusing on a group of chords that you will also come across in a song, and it helps you play music. For the scale of C major, you get these diatonic chords. And you want to check out these with the root on the sixth string as well, of course, and here I'm starting with the fourth note in the scale, so with an F major 7, but I'm still playing the diatonic chords of C major. With these two sets of chords, then things get easier to play because they really fit together. So a 2 5 1 in C major could be played as. So that gets really smooth because I'm combining voicings from both of the previous two exercises. And you could also start with the root on the sixth string, that will give you this. And you, of course, also want to use these to play through chord progressions to get the sound of the song into your ears. To give you an idea about how to do this, here's a bit of the Ellington Strayhorn classic, Sad and Doll. Later, you can start to expand on the chords by adding notes, melody, and turning them into rootless voicings. I have another video that goes over that process, which you can check out. I'll link to it in the description. But first, I think you want to check out this skill, which is often left out, but is essential to develop because it's at the very core of the jazz sound. When you start learning jazz, then it's only a matter of time before you come across somebody who will tell you that bebop sounds like Bach. And there's a reason for that. When you listen to a jazz solo, like the Charlie Parker solo on Au Privat that I showed you earlier, then you can see how the lines really move towards strong chord tones on the downbeat. And that gives the solo direction and a lot of forward moving energy because the melody is always pushing ahead. This is probably one of the things that you like about jazz if you think about it. And that type of flow is something that you also find in the fairly dense melodies of Bach, which is why those two are connected so often. But if you're just starting out and learning how to play the right notes over each chord, then you're probably not thinking about how the solo flows and more focused on finding and playing the right notes on each chord. And that means that a solo on a blues in F probably sounds something like this. making it worse than it actually is, of course, but I'm sure you can hear what I mean. What is missing is that you start using the notes of the chord that you're on to get to the next chord, similar to what Charlie Parker does or anybody else that you check out. I'll give you a great resource for this in a bit. It should sound more like this. show you a simple method to get this into your solos in a bit, but next to that you should also listen to just a lot of solos and maybe consider playing some good jazz etudes, like the exercises in the Joe Pass guitar style book. That is a great way to hear this in action. There's a link to the book and of course the video that I made about it in the description. Let's check out how to practice toward a real jazz flow. This is not magic and very much something that you can learn. What you need to do is to take the notes of the chord that you're on and use them to make a melody that points toward a note in the next chord, what we often refer to as a target note. This makes your solo sound great because it has a natural flow where the melodies lock in with the chords, and it also just makes sense. It's not random notes over chords because they're actually going somewhere. Your solo also put the chord tones on the strong beats in the rhythm, 
so the harmony is very clear and you can hear chords change and also what chords are in there even without any backing. A simple example to get started would be something like this. If you're practicing to improvise over the F blues, then a basic version of this is to take the arpeggios of F7 and B flat 7. The easiest note to make the sound of the chord clear is the third. So for B flat 7, we want to use the third D as a target note. And now you just want to practice making melodies with the F7 arpeggio that really end on that D. Something like this. When you play like this, then there's a connection between the two chords. It doesn't sound like different notes and different chords. It sounds like a melody and you can clearly hear the chord change. Now, of course, you want to explore different ways to play lines like this, even with just a simple set of notes like the four chord tones of each chord. But of course, it's difficult to make interesting solos if you're limited to only using one octave arpeggios. For this to really work, you need to add other things to that, and that will make your solo sound more interesting. You can work on using the same building blocks and melodic techniques that Charlie Parker and Joe Pass use in their playing. Jazz is a rich language, and you can get very creative with the melodies in your solos. That is a next logical step after starting to work on these three skills. And I talk about that in this video, which will give you a great foundation for developing your lines and making your solos really sound like jazz. Check it out. Learn jazz, make music.